How we go guys, hope you're doing well. So today you join me in the kitchen and I wanna to talk to you today about tracking and how it is a very, very useful tool to help with your fat loss um, and it will really improve the accuracy of what you know and the results you are getting. So tracking food, you require a few little things. So we can use a, a food scale, uh, a measuring drug, and then sort of any sort of tracking app such as my fitness pal um, in this we we measure foods that we we eat and we consume scan them in so you've got a nice numerical sort of understanding of what your intakes are like now some people are like mm, i don't know it seems a bit obsessive however in my experience people are truly awful at guessing their calorie intake and eyeballing portion sizes and I'll show you an example in a minute. So with tra tracking, what it allows us to do is we actually can see the intakes we're actually having and then we can have better decisions of whether to take calories up or down based on what we know we're tracking and what our uh, body shape is doing. Is it coming down, is it going up? And as I said before, people are not very good at gauging portion sizes and will swear blind that we're definitely in a deficit and then you actually get into it and realizing they're overshooting by a fair bit and that's what's affecting their fat loss. So what it does is think of it as, as a way of gaining an understanding of your intake. So you become much better at judging portion sizes and what that equates to in a calorie intake and then you can make the decisions based on the actual numbers as opposed to what you think you are doing. So for those who sort of think, oh, isn't it a bit, bit too much, it's a bit obsessive, you know, think of it as a way to educate yourself about portion sizes and build an understanding of your intakes. Once you know this, you become much, uh, a much better judge of what you're actually doing and then you've got the option of being able to start to move away from tracking once you've built that understanding of portion sizes. Think of it like sort of stabilizers on a bike. They're there to guide you as we're learning. And then the aim is obviously to come away from it when we become good, in this case, at riding a bike or in the case we're using here, at knowing what your calorie intake is. You can make much better decisions in terms of adjusting macronutrients once you've built the understanding and then you become much better at doing it on your own. So what I wanna do now guys is kind of show you the error that people can make when tracking. So if we were to take this peanut butter here and take a typical, okay, 15, was 15 a second ago and it's not stuck on my finger. Um, 15 grams serving of peanut butter like so, which is 93 calories, and then compare it to what people sometimes do. So they could go, yep, yeah, that's my serving. That's, that's, that'll be my 15 grams. And you see that's, that's 26, that's 26 grams there. So it's nearly twice the calories so you can start to see how eyeballing it, you've doubled your calorie intake just from a spoonful of peanut butter right there. Um, in this example we're gonna use here, a uh, classic one would be some porridge oats. So a recommended serving size here is 50 grams. I'm just gonna measure that out for you now. Okay, so, you know, that is what 50 grams look like. How many people would just go, yeah, about half-ish a bowl, that's about right. So, you know, just shy of 80 grams. So the difference in calories here for 50 grams is 181 calories. For 80 grams here, there's 289 calories. There's a difference of 108 calories every time you have breakfast. Over the week, Monday to Friday, you're 550 calories out. I mean, that's that's effectively a day's deficit if you're trying to lose a pound of uh, body fat. 
you know, so as you can see from those two examples, if we were aiming for uh, a pound of fat loss each week, which is a deficit per week of three and a half thousand, um, so that's 500 calorie ca uh, deficit a day, just those two slight um, adjustments for the slightly bigger portion of porridge and peanut butter each day, that takes 200 of your 500 uh, calorie deficit away per day. So over the week, you know, you've got 1400 calories that you've now not in a deficit and that's that's 40% of your calorie deficit gone. So you now go from losing a pound a week to just over half a pound a week. And you're gonna go, well, why am I not getting results? Well, the thing is, is you've just done two things that have massively shrunk your deficit. You do two, three more of those and all of a sudden there is no deficit and that's what I need to get across with the tracking. No, you don't have to do it forever, but it's a good place to start to build an awareness of your habits and what's actually going on as opposed to what you may think is going on. So don't be afraid for the first couple of weeks or months to get on the MyFitnessPal, build an understanding of, of what portion sizes look like and what certain calorie intakes look like. And then as you become more and more aware and much better at gauging it for yourself or intuitively, then you can start to move away. Maybe track every other day, then track on a Monday and a weekend. And then you can move away entirely because you've got that understanding of what's going on and how to adjust portion sizes to make real change in your results. So take them guys, don't fear tracking. Use it as a tool to help you learn. If you've got any questions guys, comment below and I will get right back to you. See you later.